Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to MGW1232. My name is uh, Mohamed Shiban, and I am continuing uh, um, this lecture, lecture number eight, which is a continuation of uh, lecture seven. Now, lecture seven, we talked about the deposit side, uh, and we talked about the um, uh, ODI at Damana. We talked about the Mudaraba contracts. And this is mainly the two contracts where we can receive money from the depositors. Now that is the liability side. Let's talk about the asset side, which is the most important thing in this financial intermediation, which Islamic finance and Islamic banking is trying to claim. Uh, and they are claiming actually, and they are in practice. Now in the financing side, which banks are giving loans? Islamic banks. If you are in a bank, you cannot recognize whether that's a loan or it's another contract. And of the day, you will get the finance you need, whether you go for a housing loan, whether you go for car loan, whether you go to for any personal loan, you will find the same um, uh, process almost. However, the contract is completely different. The risk sharing is different. And more importantly, the halal thing, uh, the halal issue, is involved in those financing. Now, I cannot explain all those financing projects and all those financial projects in finance in Islamic finance uh, for the uh, financing side, but I will cover the main concepts and the main contracts that are, that are used all over these uh, Islamic banks across the board and uh, in all those countries, including the uh, Gulf collaboration countries, uh, which is in the Middle East and also here in this part of the world. So if you allow me to just share my uh, slides, there are around 24 slides, I think. Um, I'll just uh, share them and start. So this is the... Uh, Uh, this is the slide actually. And let's now start with the, uh, so this is the concept. And this is what I'm trying to cover here. I'm trying to cover the, I want to describe and understand different types of financing facilities. When I say financing facilities, main meaning the loans. It's not loans. We don't call it loans. We call it financing facilities. Uh, we want to understand that in Islamic banks, we want also to differentiate between the exchange financing and the partnership contracts because you can finance under two schemes, either through exchange, which we call it Mu'awadat, and this is an Arabic word, or a partnership contract, which is called Musharaka, which is also coming from the Arabic word. And we, um, we will try while we are processing uh, and progressing to compare and contracts between Islamic banking and Gobishan banking uh, financing facilities. And this should be clear to you, uh, even if you are not a banker, even uh, probably you have used or heard about those um, uh, financing facilities and banks, which is actually the loans or the credit cards. Now, this is actually what we get in the um, um, uh, this is the loans which we get them in, uh, in conventional uh, banks. Uh, we will get what we call um, commercial and um, uh, secured loans, um, which is, we call it syndication. This is like spot loans and loan commitments. You know, um, you can give it now or you can promise to give it later on. Islamic banks also do this. And this is actually uh, designed for businesses and huge businesses. So this is why we call it commercial and uh, industrial loans. Now, the main, this is kicking around now. It's not a big part of the bank financing, the conventional banking, also Islamic banking. The big part which take around 60% is the real estate. This one will take around 15 to 20, 10 to 15%. Uh, real estate is the biggest, uh, the biggest financing area. Uh, and then we have the other consumer loans, and you can talk about personal loans, you can talk about auto uh, loans, which is, you can talk about credit card. And some of those loans are revolving, like the credit cards, you can give the credit card, and you know, you don't have to make a contract every month, you just, as long as you pay the statement, it will be just uh, renewed and you can withdraw. 
uh, and then um, you clear the statement under the month and you start to withdraw again. Um, so those loans, for example, the business loans can be um, uh, revolving loans, or sometimes they are not revolving loans. As I told you, the automobiles, the personal loans, even the housing loans. If you want any other loans, you have to have a contract. And of course, there is other loans provided by the uh, by the conventional banks, which is the uh, we can have farming loans or industry loans. Um, they lend each other interbank loans. You can also provide government loans. End of the day, the reason I brought this, this, this slide is because all of those loans, you can find them under Islamic finance, but they are Sharia compliant or halal loans. They don't depend on interest. All of those loans depends on interest. The return of all those loans is interest. Now, the same loans, but it's not interest. They are using another scheme and let's look what are those um, loans. So the concept, let me go to the concept first. So the main concept to transfer all of those from lending and borrowing activities, lending and borrowing activities, which means with depends on interest, I give you 1000, you give me what 10% interest, you give me 1100 and 100 end of the year. And this is interest, I can give it for two years, it will be compounding three years, four years, housing loan for 20 years. Yeah, there is always interest, which is the return. Now, to, uh, to, to get out of this return, the only thing you can do, uh, this is what Islamic banking do. So the main concept of leveraging, which means we have to use those, uh, um, Islamic banks just start 40 years ago, um, you know, almost, um, 60 years, which is 1963, the first bank. If you talk about conventional banks, they started around 600 years ago, 1395 in Italy, somewhere there. So um, those products, actually, Islamic banks are leveraging, are using those financial products. However, they restructure the, 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 uh, the contract. And when they structure the contract, they transfer the whole issue of borrowing and activities into so this borrowing, lending and borrowing activities, they transfer them, this is the main concept, they transfer them to those two contracts, either by sale uh, activities, which means now the banks becomes like a business identity and they get a profit. Now the return here is a profit. The return here is actually a profit, not an interest. And partnership activities, just, you know, this is a type of uh, BLS, um, profit and loss sharing type of contract, which is there is no problem about it. Now, when I said Mu'awadat, this is the Mu'awadat. This is the uh, Mu'awadat, which is the profit exchange. And this is actually the Musharakat, which is BLS. So this is the exchange contract, and this is the partnership contract or Musharakat, just to understand it. Now, just to take you back to the Islamic Bank of Britain, which is my favorite example here, um, uh, you can see we already talked last week about tier, but now when we talk about the exchange contracts, we can have this facility called Bayman Murabaha, or we can talk about BBA as they use it in Malaysia, Bayman Ajin, or you can talk about leasing or talk about Salam. Or you can also talk about Estesna, which I didn't mention here. Uh, this is only for the exchange contract, which is coming from this concept, which is the buy and sell uh, based on profit. Now, you can also, you can also talk about this partnership, which is actually coming here, uh, which is partnership. So the partnership is actually either Musharaba, Mudaraba, which we already talked about it last week. Mudaraba can be in the financing side or can be on the deposit side. Mudaraba is when two partners, what you call it a silent partner, uh, who provide the capital and the other one provide the um, um, work and effort and they make a partnership. So the bank can, in, in this case, be the investor. And when we were the deposit side, the bank was actually the entrepreneur. So the bank now 
be the investor and bring some uh, entrepreneur who need the money. If they trust their project, they will finance them and they can divide the profits. And the other one, which is they can go also in Musharaka. So you can finance a loan through this. And you can, you can do all these financing to all these type of contracts. Now let's start with these contracts just briefly. So we have the cost plus, Murabaha, which is this one. Please, I will follow this. This is Murabaha. Murabaha is actually, it's a cost plus. So um, this is basically a sale goods at a price covering the purchase. Uh, price plus profit margin agreed upon both parties. You have to agree. So the bank, the customer will approach the bank and say, buy this maybe car or any other car uh, for 50,000 and they will give you 5,000 um, profit and they will pay you the money in one year time or two years or three years. And you sign a contract, it's over, it's halal. So the bank is a buyer and is, is a seller and you are the buyer and this is a deferred sale. And this sale will be paid later on with a profit agreed upon now. So anything changes in the interest rate and no compounding interest, no penalties for anything that's um, overdue. All of those issues are not there, which means compounding interest is not there for any, um, you know, lagged amounts or any unpaid amounts. And this is the basic concept of it. Now, Murab had transformed traditional, as I told you, traditional lending activities into sale and purchase agreement under which the lender buys materials, good or equipment required by the borrower. Who is the, the, who is the lender? Lender is the buyer, which is the bank, based on the borrower request. So um, they will sell it in a higher price, agreed upon by both parties. And this principle, as you can see, Islamic banking are no longer share profits and losses, but instead assumes the rule of a normal business identity. This I want you to be aware of, which is now, um, it's an exchange contract. Uh, the settlement for the purchase, which can be done in cash, will be specified in the agreement. This is usually a financing facility granted a short term period. They usually take it for one year. So companies who need inventory, they will do for them. Um, if you want to open an LC uh, import from outside, they can do that. If you want to purchase some type of materials that will be paid later on, uh, this is a good contract for the short term. Um, now, but there it has conditions, which means the ownership um, responsibilities justify that the bank um, still on the assets. And um, there is a markup, as I told you. Um, risk is shaded with the ownership of the commodity bond by the financial uh, institution, by the financer until the resale. Um, so risk remains after resale as bank has first purchaser, purchaser sorry, purchaser um, uh, responsibilities if good defective. Um, if there is anything about the, um, you know, the, um, um, because the bank is the buyer, he has to be careful how to buy those things and then therefore he takes the responsibility. So any defective assets, anything like that, uh, it's, um, it's the responsibility of the bank. Uh, this is, this satisfied client could make claim on the bank and issue warranties if there is a problem with the goods. And this is if you want a graph, so if I want to buy this machine, uh, I will go to the bank, the bank um, will buy it for me from the supplier and will give it to me, as you can see here. So the customer will ask the bank to buy, the bank will buy this and will pass it to the customer. Customer after one year will pay this dollar, which was used to buy this purchase, plus some types of profit, transaction is over. It's very straightforward and you can see it here. You can see now the, uh, uh, this is the Islamic banks. There's a vendor who is the owner of the machine or if you open LC, you can open it to China, Japan, anywhere. Uh, so the bank uh, will, uh, they will, the asset will be here. Now the asset will be um, uh, transferred to the bank. The bank will pay and spot. Then the bank will take this asset, give it to the client. The client will pay it in deferred sale. This is a spot payment. And this is our spot sale. 
This is actually a deferred payments, but it will be with a profit. Uh, we are done with this facility. Let's go to the next one. Now we have another cost plus, which is another Mrabaha, but in militia we call it DBA, which is which means it's another it's another Murabaha, it's another cost plus. However, we do use this for housing and we use this for uh, uh, long time basis. It's not a lump sum, you have to pay it in monthly basis. So in this case, for example, um, if I want to buy a house, what we do in, in, in a house, the I will buy a house and they will pay to the conventional bank will pay to the um, contractor. Now the contractor will transfer will, will transfer the uh, will apply, apply for a loan and the loan will be transferred to the contractor in two payments or three payments. Then the asset will be transferred to me and I have to pay it for the next um, uh, twenty years. Here, the case is different and let me show you how it works. Now, um, this is how Islamic banks work. Uh, this is a housing loan coming through BBA. So actually now the first, uh, the, the follower, which is we know, those who follow this, you know, um, condos, for example, if I want to buy an apartment or a house. So the customer will be, will define, um, uh, number one, the customer will define um, a house. Then um, the customer purchases, um, make a purchase, uh, uh, what we call asset and sign uh, uh, sale and purchase agreement. So uh, between them and the property, the follower, There's sometimes here in Malaysia, we pay 5%, 2%. Sometimes we pay even 1,000 ringgits for some houses. And sometimes, you know, just a very down payments to say that the uh, until we sign the uh, uh, you know sale and purchase agreement, now the customer will go now and they need financer, so they will go to the bank. So the bank will buy this agreement, the S and B agreement, based on original S and B signed by the customer, the follower, uh, using the property purchase agreement, which is they sign now a BBA, not. This is NB, but the property purchase agreement um, uh, of the rights on the asset. So now the asset actually transferred to the bank. Now the bank will sell the rights of this PBA to the customer at agreed price plus bank's profit margin on the fair payments. So they will make it for, if it is 20 years, they will make it for 24 months. Uh, 240 months, and they will tell you what you are going to do uh, under those 24 months and how much you will pay. So this will be a different agreement. Customer and the bank will sign now an asset sale agreement. So it's, this is the first agreement. Now this is the second agreement. The third agreement is when the bank actually transfer the right of the asset under this asset agreement. Now the custom, of course, the property, uh, the, the property, the follower need the money, so the bank will pay will pay them. So as you can see, number five, bank. Bank will pay uh, bank based the follower on progress payments based on the usually three payments, and then down that the follower already gave the house. And the house is, and he's, he received his money in, in two years time, whatever. Now we come to the uh, number six. So the customer now, based on this agreement, because he really has the house, uh, will, um, uh, will pay for the next 20 years or 30 years. So the transactions is over. As you can see, we transfer this loan, housing loan, to buy and purchase agreement. Of course, um, it looks like now in terms of the profit, whether the profit equals the interest that is paid by um, commercial banking. Yes, maybe competitive, but later on, if there is a foreclosure, if the, there is late payments, the case is different and the contract is different. And therefore Islamic banks actually bear a lot of um, uh, risk here uh, because the inflation and the changes in the interest rate and the changes in the profit rate and all those issues. So let me just um, uh, end this one, which is the second facility now. Now let me go to the third facility. 
Uh, the self felicity is which we know it. This is leasing. Leasing is um, is there is actually no difference between Islamic and uh, commercial banks, and it's very uh, it's very famous one, and it's very common, and it has no interest in either commercial or Islamic banks, and it's very um, um, you know you you buy um, so under the Sharia concept of leasing uh, finance, the bank purchases the asset required by the customer and then lease the assets to the customer for a given period. It's an easy as this. The lease rental and other terms and conditions is agreed upon both parties. The most important financial difference between Islamically permitted leasing and conventional one is the leasing agreement must be on the lease object for duration of the lease. I don't know whether you want to know this by this time, but usually in conventional financing, if you if the lease over the 90, 90% of the year um, of the of the lease covers 90% of the useful life of the assets, um, uh, conventional finance make it, uh, you know, uh, what we call financing lease, uh, which means the ownership, the insurance, all those issues, it becomes the uh, customer responsibility. Uh, Islamic finance does not accept this, whether it's 90% or 95 or even 100%. Uh, of the useful life of the assets, it becomes under the, it becomes what we call operating lease. And the operating lease means the ownership is still under the bank. And therefore they take care of the insurance, they take care of the maintenance of the asset and all these uh, issues. Now, um, this is how it works. So you have a vendor here who has those machines. Um, the, the, they will transfer the title to the bank. The bank will pay, they will buy this asset. For example, they will, you can buy a car under this agreement. So you buy it and the bank now sell it to the, lease it to the client and receive rental payments. This the rental payments is actually higher than the purchase price for sure, uh, because the difference is actually the profits. And this rental can be, if you are talking about car, you can talk about five years, six years, eight years, and actually, there is another agreement where you can own the, um, um, the, uh, the, the, the asset later on. This can also be to uh, in housing, can be used in housing. So this is what you call um, uh, conditions. The conditions, asset or property being leased must have um, and can be used. They must be used. You cannot you know, lease something that cannot be used. Um, uh, lesser must be providing an asset of value to justify the rental payments. And this is an Islamic, you know, things. It has to be um, free of ambiguity. And this word is a new one called garar. And garar means ambiguity, understand it from this one. So if you hear the word garar, which means there is no um, speculation, there is no cheating, there is no, everything is clear and there is no ambiguity in the contract. Um, leased property cannot be used for purposes other than the specified in the leasing agreement. So if I sell, if I lease you, for example, um, um, a good, huge greens, you know, to, um, uh, you know, for those buildings or using to ports or, you know, to carry tanks or, um, you know, excavators or any of those, you know, uh, bathing machines used to build roads and constructions. Um, if you, uh, you have to define the contract and define the project and the lease of that project. You cannot go and lease it again, or you cannot go and uh, do some other things with it. The lease agreement should be clear and decide in the project that uh, and the, uh, why the asset will be used and for what asset. Now, um, this is what I told you. Ijara can also be, um, the asset can be owned, which means the payments you can pay for both to own and to lease. And there is, um, uh, here in Malaysia, we have what you call ETAB, E-I-T-A-B. -E um, ETAB is, I didn't mention it here, I didn't discuss it, but it comes, those, you know, um, passenger cars, like what we have, not the Uber now, but now the, uh, or the Grab, we used to have taxis, those taxis, cars, they used to be bought in Malaysia. Uh, all those taxis used to be uh, bought under this uh, Ijara Ktena, which means lease and purchase, lease then own the, the assets. Uh, this is the ETAP, okay. Um, 
Let me just go now to the next contract. Uh, we have Salam contract. Now this Salam contract, they will tell you why those contracts are used later on. Salam contract is actually very, very useful uh, contract. It started for, um, for farming, but now you can use it for anything. Um, and that's actually very important. This is the only contract where you pay the money first, the financer will pay the money first and receive the asset later. Usually the asset will be sold to the customer and the money received later. Now this is different. You will give the, um, the customer money and then you will buy an asset from him later on. Why is this useful? If you are doing farming, if you are doing, you know, if you are in palm oil plantations, for example, or any other, if you are working in Gintings or any other places um, um, for farming, uh, you need the money. So you want to cultivate the land, you want to pay the labor, you want to pay, give the machines to, you know, um, uh, do some construction for that. I mean, some, some uh, by equipment, um, irrigations, whatever, all those things you need, you need to have it before the crops comes out before you, you know, before you, you take the, uh, the uh, 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 before you cultivate. So in this case, um, um, you need all those things. So you need to um, start farming and then later on, maybe in six months time, uh, if the season is six months time, then when you, um, when you have the crops, then you sell it to the asset, to the bank. And the bank already have a buyer what we call it parallel salam. I didn't discuss it here. It's called parallel salam. So I will give you the, uh, I will give you the money. You will go and do those manufacturing, whatever, do this farming, then sell me the products. And then um, uh, I have already a buyer. Now somebody would say, all those contracts under salam only for farming, who do, who do farming now? You know, farming is just supported by the government or whatever. No, you can do it for anything else. For example, you are a programmer or you are a startup or you are any of those people who are manufacturing anything. Either you are developing a program or developing a product or developing a machine or doing anything. So in this case, you need money to do this, uh, to build the assets. And then when the asset is ready, then you uh, sell it to the bank based on uh, prices uh, settled uh, and agreed upon in the beginning. And when do you deliver the asset, already the bank has what you call a buyer who will buy with higher price and the bank will make a profit between what he sell when he sell the asset and for how much he gave you as a developer or entrepreneur or this guy who built the uh, the asset or maybe cultivate the land and you know grow those uh, 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 fruit or um, you know crops and bring it later on so this is how the salam contract it has so much and wide uses and it's very very shia compliant as you can see this is we do it for farming so and today i will give you the money you need to start you know um, um, dropping the seeds uh, you know, be behaving the land, doing all, bringing the labor, then bringing the labor to cultivate six months ago. Then when it is ready, you will actually uh, give the, uh, 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 so this is today when you receive the money and you start the product, then when you finish, you will give it to the financer six months later. And this six months has to be fixed. You cannot, you know, delay or you cannot um, cancel the contract or whatever from either party because the money is already in the land or maybe in the machine you are building or in the program you are building, whatever, or in the startup you are investing. So this is how the Salam contract works. Now, um, we have another contract, which is very interesting. And this is for manufacturing. Sisna means uh, it's an Arabic word and it's coming from the manufacturing. So bail Sisna, which is sale of a Sisna or manufacturing sale, but we call it bail Sisna. And please, uh, if you are going to work in Islamic finance, stick to the to the um, uh, to this Arabic words because they are um, not Arabic anymore. They are actually across the board and identified with this specific contract. When we say bail Sisna, anybody know that Arab, non-Arab, whatever, they know what you mean. It's a name of a contract now. 
as we do with Murabaha, with uh, Ijara, with all those things. So this is another deferred sale contract where the price is paid in installments as the work progress in manufacturing or building. This is good for if you want to build a factory. Now, when you build the factory, you may bring the machines, all the machines, all the equipment, people who will install this. Um, if you have the land, for example, for example, you bring it from China or Japan, or you manufacture it here with another contractor in Malaysia. So this contractor, when they build all those machines for you, so you are building, for example, a furniture, um, uh, you know, um, furniture factory, or you are building huge restaurant or maybe stadium or, you know, any of those recreation issues, or maybe, um, uh, you know, um, a mall or something like this, a shopping mall or whatever, whatever is it, it's machine or factory or any businesses. So do you have a contractor who will do this and provide those machines? This contractor is not part of the contract. You and the bank is part of the contract. So he needs his money now. So you will, the bank will take the the, the contract, the, after he um, uh, agree with the customer, um, if it is, if the, the following of the, of, the, of, the, of the asset will take two years, and the installments will be three and three or four uh, installments. So the bank will take this and pay for the design, pay for the machines, pay for the consultations until the asset is ready. They will deliver the asset to you where you can start producing. And now the contract will start for 20 years. So it's two contracts. The first contract they will give you, they will give the contractor and then the contractor will finish the um, uh, assets, deliver it to the bank, the bank will deliver it to the customer. Uh, so uh, so it's not say, say I have a contractor, it will take two years, maybe four installments for two years, every six months. After two years, bank receives from contractor and deliver the asset to the borrower, uh, as you can see here for the next one years. And this is how it works. So you have here the financer, will give the money for all these issues until the asset is ready and then they will submit it to you. Um, then uh, this is this is uh, how this now work. Now we finish, we are done with all those contracts, which is actually the, um, um, the exchange contract. One, two, three, four, we added this is now, but we talked about Salam, Ijara, Beta Manager, Murabaha. Now let's go to the Musharaka contracts which is actually this one. Uh, this is the Salam, sorry. So the Misharaka contract is um, very straightforward. It is a partnership and it has no um, interest. It has, it's very Sharia compliant. Um, so we have a contract between two people where both of them actually, um, um, uh, the bank will be a financer and a partner in the same time they will participate in both the work and the money. And you will have another one who will, do the, will be the customer with you. You can read it about it here about it, but I will give you an example. Um, there is sometimes, for example, I want to import um, uh, 10 BMWs or maybe 10 Telsa cars, this electric cars from the US. And each one costs 200,000 ringgits, for example. And I want this is if I want to import the 10 of them and they have really buyers and they get a good deal from Telsa. So I need now 2 million. I don't have all the money. I can approach the bank. The bank can finance 80% of it. And I finance 20%. Now the bank knows this is a good contract and maybe those cars will be sold fast in Malaysia and the price is okay. So they will go with you 50-50 or 80-20. So they will go to your partner, you pay 20, you pay 50. Um, you, um, that is the capital. And then after that, the, uh, the cargo arrive, arrive here, you sell it. Um, there will be some expenses for the management. You take it out of the, uh, there will be a statement of expenses. So you have the um, uh, revenues, which is the sales. Then you will have the, um, the cost of it, which is the, uh, the capital. Then they will be have a profit, and the profit will be the capital is the capital that the bank paid and you paid. You will take your capital, 
you will live. So you have the revenues, the sales, you take the capital, which is the initial um, agreements. And this can be in one month, in two months or six months. It doesn't have to be a partnership forever. Um, and the partnership will be over after that contract, but the financing through partnership. So now after that, you will give an expenses for the, um, uh, for the management, which is maybe the customer who uh, come with the idea. And then the rest, you will divide it between uh, the two of you, whether it's profit or losses. If there is losses, there is no management fees. If there is profit, usually there is management fees. And this is how the Musharaka works. Um, this is the last contracts I want to talk about it. There is so many contracts we can talk about it, but this is the main thing. I think it will give you a good idea uh, within the time uh, limitation and the context of this class. Um, we talked about the deposit side and we talked about um, uh, uh, you know, financing side. One thing I want to tell you, maybe I want you to look at this uh, invested to this uh, slide. This is just a summary. Uh, Islamic credit cards, we can use it for retail. Retail means the personal, and we can do it for business. Islamic finance do that. Uh, Murabha contract can use for retail and for businesses. Uh, Tower Rock, which we don't have talked about it, which is another, um, uh, uh, this is used in Malaysia actually. Uh, this contract is uh, cost plus, but um, it's a little bit different and it has some problems with the Middle East because um, Middle East um, Shafi contract, Shafi school of thoughts, if you understand that Shafi school of thought, uh, Islamic school of thoughts, um, think this contract is halal. Uh, other uh, school of thoughts in the Middle East think it's not uh, Sharia compliant. So I didn't talk about it here. Uh, Ijara can use for retail and business. And then diminishing Musharaka, which is just Musharaka. Uh, however, it's like um, you go on the partnership and then you own the asset at the end. It's like the ETAP, which we have it and the uh, exchange contracts. And then we have the Salam. We use it only for businesses. And we have the Sisra only for businesses. We don't use it for uh, personal finance. Uh, I'm done uh, with this. Uh, uh, I think I'll just stop sharing. Uh, I want to thank you very much and I wish you the best uh, and hopefully you find those two lectures uh, useful. Thank you and have a good day wherever you are. Bye-bye.